In the webinar you are about to watch, myself and our customer success manager, Stephen LeBaron, talk all about loyalty. What is it? Why is it important? Why is it impactful to your business? And then we give you four quick strategies on how you don't need an entire program. All you need is yourself and some video opportunities to build that know, like, and trust that are the most important factors to build that customer loyalty. Enjoy. Good morning, everybody. I know a few of us are already popping in here. I always hate when I jump into a webinar and it's just everybody's just sitting there quietly. So we're going to talk. We're going to fill space for the next few minutes here uh, just because I want to make sure that we're building up the energy. We're really excited about today's topic. So welcome, uh, welcome. Ahead, hop in. Yes, yeah, Steve, we're going to we're going to introduce you in just a little bit. But everybody that has not met Stephen LeBaron before, he is joining us and he's going to help us out. If you're not already in chat, Hop in chat, open the chat. You'll see that option at the bottom here. You guys know if you've been here before, we really want these to be conversations. We really want this to be an opportunity to hear from you, talk with you, give you guys what you need. So I already see a bunch of hellos from Toronto, from Virginia, from California. Do make sure if you are doing that, that you click the little button above where you type your chat and make sure it goes out to everyone because we want to make sure that everybody gets to respond to that chat there. And here's my question. We started talking about this beforehand. What's been the music of the morning for you? What's pumping you up today? It's Wednesday. It's a hump day. I would love to hear what music, what songs have been playing for you. Steven, what were the ones you just said have been <laughs> your songs of the morning? Because they were great. Uh, so my team and I, we like to celebrate a lot and get things energized in the morning. So we have a Slack channel and they start to throw music into that. And we, we've we had some good ones here. We've had everything from Little John to Chubba Wumba <laughs> to, so I've just been enjoying myself and getting pumped up for this webinar, honestly. Well, Deirdre just Rickrolled us because she said Rick Astley never going to give you up. So oh, yes, there we go. Rickrolled the entire webinar, Deirdre. Congratulations. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> well, good. Well, as people continue to hop in, I don't want to uh, delay a ton. So let's go through the housekeeping stuff. We already talked about the chat. Keep throwing your chat stuff in. I'm seeing awesome answers from Taylor Swift to Sublime to Van Halen to the Revels. I mean, we got all sorts of good stuff in there. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, make sure you use that. That's a great place to talk with each other. Uh, we have such an amazing community here at BombBomb. Bomb. Use that. Learn from them. If you're having success with something we're talking about, Talk about that, share that, because it really does build energy and momentum, uh, and, and that's a really exciting spot. The other place that you can communicate with us is that Q&A feature. We have the wonderful Tara Williams helping us out today. She's one of our customer care reps. There she is. Good morning, Tara. And she always, I told her, I was like, I need glasses like you, because you're just killing it every <laughs> single morning. So so she's going to be there monitoring. Stephen and I will be, will be monitoring Q&A and trying to answer questions and stuff. But Q&A is a really good specific place for, I have a poignant question that I don't want to get lost in chat. You can see chat gets cruising when people start throwing a bunch of stuff in and we don't want to miss that stuff. So we always try and leave a little bit of time throughout and at the end for Q&A. But if you've got something where you're like, I know I'm not the only person with this question, I don't want it to get lost, throw it in the Q&A. And if Tara can't answer it, if it's something that's coming in a lot, we'll try and answer it live and go from there. So the last piece, and I know we'll have to reiterate this a couple of times throughout, we are recording this webinar. Do not fret. You will get this recording sent to you in the next couple of days here. I know we go through a lot of information in this hour. So if you miss something, if you want to review something, if you need help, whatever, just know we will send that follow up. Um, that's going to come in the next couple of days here. So we are recording this. We will send it if you need to leave early. If you come late, if you miss some pieces, don't stress about it. You'll always have that opportunity to do that. Um, with that, I do want to take 30 seconds here and let you know, guys know um, some updates here at BombBomb Bomb that are kind of both sides of the same coin. They're exciting and also really sad at the same time. Alicia Baruti, our national speaker who has been hosting these webinars with us, with me for four years now, um, officially took another job at another company. She has an amazing opportunity to continue working in the financial services industry, doing tech stuff. Um, she's going to shine with what she's doing. And it was an opportunity she just could not say no to. And so um, unfortunately, she will not be here hosting these with me. For those of you that have been with us for a long time, you know all of the amazing knowledge and information and charisma and everything that Alicia has not just brought to these webinars, but to Bomb as a whole. So we are thrilled for her. We're excited for her. But I just wanted to let you guys know, so you're not going, wait a second, where's Alicia been? Um, she has moved on to the, kind of the next step in her career. So we're really excited. But what's great about this, and this will segue us to the next piece here, 
This gives us an opportunity for us to introduce more people to you. Uh, we want you to get to know BombBomb Bomb, and the heart of BombBomb Bomb is its people. And so with that, um, I'm sharing my screen as well, but I want to make sure that I get to introduce you to Stephen LeBaron. I've gotten to work with Stephen for a very long time. He is currently our customer success manager, but Steve, welcome. Thank you for doing this. Why don't you give everybody just kind of a little bit of a, a glimpse and an intro on, on who you are and why this is such a good topic for you to be on. Oh, thank you so much, Kevin. I'm, I definitely cannot replace Alicia. She is phenomenal, but I am so excited to be here. Again, guys, my name is Steve LeBaron. Actually, I saw a lot of you in there that I have known for many years. Shout out to Deirdre, shout out to John, and I'm sure there's others in there as well, but I, um, I'm so grateful. I started out at BombBomb six and a half years ago. Um, started out in many regards, sending simple videos, just trying to learn the process on our care team, which Tara is a part of. And I uh, started to work my way through the ranks, started to realize I had such a passion for uh, rehumanization through digital mediums. And so I, I went from tier one to tier two, which is a little more specialized role. Many of you, if you're some leaders in here, you probably see me in the onboarding space where I got to train a lot of your teams on how to get started with a tool just like this, which creates, you know, new relationships and makes you stand out here. Um, and now I've I've gracefully accepted this uh, role as care manager, where if any of you ever reach out to BombBomb, Bomb, you say, hey, this is broke. I, I need some help. You're working with one of my six team members, Tara included, and I help to lead this amazing group of people. And so I'm um, thrilled to be here. I've sent 22,000 videos in my six and a half years here. Um, and I just wanted to uh, say I'm I'm grateful to be a part of this. Steve, we've already got some people asking about the stash. Where'd the killer stash go? So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I had it for a while. I just, it was getting annoying. I had to shave it off. I, I'm sorry, go. guys. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> well, Steve, we're excited for you to be here. He has worked on the care side. So talk about opportunities to build loyalty. Holy cow, there's great stuff there. He's going to bring some stories to that. He also worked as an onboarding manager for a long time with our enterprise clients and building loyalty and commitments from them. So uh, really excited for the information he's going to bring in. So let's dive in here. Let's get going. I know we're already six, seven minutes in. I hate to stall too much, but here's what we're going to cover. Here's our agenda on how we're going to talk about using video to build customer loyalty. One, we got to build a baseline, a foundation of what is loyalty uh, and, and how do we kind of take that understanding to then build up. Then we're going to talk about why is it important? How is it impactful to businesses specifically? And then really where the, the meat and potatoes to sound 70 years old all of a sudden is uh, we're going to talk about using video to, to build that loyalty. Because I think a lot of times what we assume and what we see other companies doing feels out of reach for us. So we're going to talk about that. And then we have a really fun little gift for you that we want to share at the end of this. So make sure that if you can stick around to the end, uh, do, because there's going to be a really neat opportunity to not only expand this discussion, but continue talking about more video uh, and, and all of those sort of things. So I did see a couple chats there. It doesn't matter where you are at on your video journey. We're going to talk about things that will be beneficial for you. If you're a bomb bomb customer, if you're not, um, doesn't matter. If you've sent one video, if you've sent 22,000 videos like Steve has, it doesn't matter. We're going to be talking about really practical strategies that you can use to start working on this. So let's start talking about, let's start talking about loyalty and what loyalty is. So this is a definition that I found that I thought was really interesting because uh, as I have talked about this with more and more people, it's interesting how many definitions I've heard that I didn't totally agree with. And I liked this one. So basically, loyalty, simply put, is that a customer loyalty happens when customers give a company repeat business over time. Now, I do think there's an, ex an extension to this definition as well. Just because somebody has been a client with you for five years does not necessarily mean they are a loyal customer. It just means they've stuck around. Now, that, there's a lot of good signs that they've stuck with you, and those are good indications that you're doing something right. But I think loyalty kind of takes a step deeper. And Steve, I know you and I were talking about this. Oh, yeah. You had mentioned something yesterday. What do you think is that added piece there? Well, so it's there's a difference between like a great customer service experience, right? You can always great, get great service anywhere, but that doesn't necessarily translate to immediate loyalty. For me, this comes down to kind of where it says they repeat business. It comes down to patterns, right? What things have happened over the course of time to make you say, man, I love this company. And I, not only man, do I love this company, but I want to tell others about it. And that's kind of where my mind goes in the role that I'm in. Absolutely. It's that opportunity to go. Not only do I agree with this, but I want to encourage others to go this way. And we've got a fun quote we'll share in a little bit that expands on that. 
But let's talk a little bit about what do what are kind of the standard assumptions around what loyalty is and how companies are doing that. I'm sure some of these you look at and go, oh yeah, I've totally experienced those, right? Like loyalty programs is a great example. And there's a lot of different versions of loyalty programs. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Some are just free ones, right? The more you buy, the more you get. If you buy a lot of stuff and they see that you're logging in and buying more, they give you higher discounts. They give you more benefits. You get more opportunities for things like that. Um, there's the paid ones where you actually go in and say, I'm going to pay to have access to this club or this group. Um, I think about airlines a lot, right? You can always upgrade to be like their, I don't even know the terms because I've never actually- Diamond done. member, <laughs> diamond There we member. go, yeah. <laughs> diamond club or whatever. And what do you get access to? You get access to these great little lobbies when you're at the airport and you're waiting. You get access to discounts with the airline and some of those things. So basically you are paying them but the benefits that you're receiving far outweigh what the costs that you're giving it, or in that is that perception. And then there's also different stuff like tier, right? The, the higher the tier, the better the things that you're going to get. So they build these tier structures similar to the more you buy, the more you get kind of mentality. But again, the idea is they're trying to bring people back, make sure that you understand that if I stick with them, things will get better for me with this product or with this. Um, some other things, another avenue of that, punch cards. I mean, how many places do you go? They're like, oh, get a punch card, right? Steve and I were joking about this a little bit. I, I will always take advantage of the punch card. I never come back to the same place just to try and get my free tent burrito or whatever it might be. That is not a motivating factor for me personally, but I think it is for other people. Other people are really big on getting that free thing. It, it's kind of like this, you know, it's a reward system in many ways. And I think it increases the likelihood of people coming back in, in many aspects and depending on your personality. Um, yeah. But there's still more to loyalty than just the carrot, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of these, that's a really interesting way to put that, Steve. I think a lot of these are a little bit of that carrot. They're dangling the carrot out in front of you to keep coming back, keep coming back, right? Keep moving forward. Um, some of these other ones, just to continue to go through these early access, if you sign up, you get early access to discounts, to sales, to new products, things like that. Discounts is a big one that you're going to see all of the time. You can see number seven there kind of is, is one that's very, very common. Give us your contact info for, we'll give you this. Now we're giving them our information so that they can market to us. They are offering, well, you'll get discounts. You'll get um, early notice on all of these different things, right? Those are really, really important ones. And then of course there's referral incentives and those sort of things. So I think we all get an idea and I'm sure we've all experienced different companies that, uh, that are using these type of programs. I want to ask you all a question as we continue to kind of dive into why is loyalty an important thing to focus on? I want you to think about what are companies that you are really loyal to? Think of a company that's just like, oh, that is, that's the company that I lean on and go back to every single time and share them in the chat because I'd be really curious what those are. Steve, did you have some come to mind for you when I threw that out there? Oh man, there's certain ones that always come to mind for me. Uh, on my side here, I'm a big fan of the Lucky brand. Um, it's a golf company um, that I use the Black Clover. Uh, many people have probably heard of them, but that's because right. I've always had good service there. Love their product. Uh, and Amazon, honestly, I've, I've never really had a bad experience with Amazon. And so I continue to shop there, but we've got a lot coming in. Nordstrom, Costco, man, I couldn't even agree oh, uh, more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny because there was like a war here in Colorado Springs when Costco opened. It was like the Sam's Club versus Costco thing. It was, it became this crazy thing because people are so, but here's what I think is really interesting to start think of thinking about, right? I've seen Asics. Um, I mean, Costco's all over the place. Nordstrom, Ritz Carlton. There's some great ones in here. I want you to take it a step further and go, why am I loyal to this company? Why do I stick with it? Costco is actually a really interesting one because you have to pay to be a member of it. I joke all the time that it's like, no big deal. I am I am part of the membership. Like it's, you know, I had to be invited. <laughs> Here's the card. Here's the card. <laughs> yeah. But why do we keep going to Costco? Why do we love Costco? I saw Apple pop up. That's a very common one. Why do we lean into that? Why do we always stick with the new iPhone, get the new iPhone, the MacBook? What is it that they're doing that's continually bringing us back. And I think as we start to think about that on a large company scale, it starts to give us some things to think about, about what do we do with our small businesses or the company that we are trying to run in order to have that same effect on people. Uh, there's some really interesting stats for those of you in the real estate market, right? Of, I, I believe, and I'm, I'm not gonna say the exact numbers because I'm not 100% positive on them, but 
after somebody closes with a realtor, over 75% intend to use that realtor again. They had a good experience. They enjoyed it. Well, the problem is realtors lean on that and go, well, I did a good job. They'll come back to me. Guess what? Within two years, less than 20% actually do reuse that realtor again. Why? Because we thought having a great service one time was enough to build that loyalty. It's not. It's repeat good interactions and those sort of things. And here's some of the power of what those can be. If somebody is loyal to you, guess what? They spend more. 90% of customers will spend more with companies that personalize that customer service they offer for them. Apple's a perfect example of this. We can all go out and get a cheaper phone than an iPhone. Almost every, well, every single one of us could go get a cheaper phone. And why is iPhone far and away the largest you know, company out there as far as mobile phones go? Because we are loyal to them, because we believe in that system, because they're doing something. We will pay more because we believe in them, because we are loyal to them. We're less likely to churn, right? 74% of customers say they will forgive a company for its mistakes after receiving excellent service. I think that's such an interesting stat right there. And that's something that resonates so much in the care world, right? Because nothing's built perfectly. Nothing works perfectly. No, no, no experience is perfect. But how you respond to that, especially with a loyal customer, it makes all the difference, right? If mm-hmm. someone comes in and says, I've been here for five years, I'm running into this and it's handled the right way, they'll forget about it. They'll move on because they received the service that they're looking for. One spoiler alert, we're going to talk more about that specific topic because I think it's a really big opportunity that sometimes we miss. So um, loyalty actually improves customer retention rates. 81% of customers say a positive customer experience increases the likelihood they'll make another purchase. So a lot of times we think of the sales cycle as not customer, get them through the funnel, get them to buy. Now they're a customer. Well, guess what? There's expansion opportunities. There's new things, there's repeat purchasing, there's referrals, there's all these different things that we can expand that customer's interaction and spending with our company. The more we do that, the more loyalty we build, the more likely they are to continue to spend and increase that. Uh, I just talked about referrals a little bit, but less likely to turn to a competitor. 76% of people say they would switch to a company's competitor due to multiple bad service customer service experiences. So it's the opposite of what we just talked about. If they're having bad experiences and you're not handling them well, they out, right? They're going to move on to the next thing. So if we don't take these opportunities, it can, we can lose people you know, strictly because of that. And last but not least here, the last stat I want to throw out is they're more likely to recommend your business to friends and improve your reputation. 64% of business leaders say that customer service has a positive impact on their company's growth. If you're doing it well. If we are leaning into this and taking these opportunities. And I don't need to tell everyone in this room, whether you're a real estate agent or anything you're working on, referrals are powerful. This is this is something where they trust someone and they're recommending it. So that trust is already there. It's connecting them to the next business. It's connecting them to the next relationship. If I have a referral for somebody that's like, yeah, this person would be great for a job. I jump on that pretty darn quick, typically. Yeah. And, and so here's, The thing, I think a lot of us, and I'm sure all of those of you that signed up for this webinar went, well, of course I want customer loyalty. I know that's something I want. I want people to stick around for a while. We all know the cost of getting a new lead versus maintaining a current client is wildly different. So what's the problem? Why don't we? Well, because all of those things that we assume with customer loyalty on that list that we went over, a lot of us don't have the resources to put something like that in place. You know, we are not going to put a a whole loyalty program together because we might be the only person working for our business. We don't have the time, the energy, the money to start to implement those things. However, here's what we're really going to focus on today. And I think what gets me really excited to think about for all of you is that you don't need all of those resources. What we do need are the skills and the tools to build the foundations that that build loyalty at its heart, which are know, like, and trust. If we can build those things and respond and communicate in the right way, that is going to build customer loyalty a heck of a lot more than a punch card ever will, right? I will always come back for my experience with the company. If I go to a coffee shop and and have a good experience, they treat me well. Heck, if I go a few times, then they remember my drink. Game changer, right? You're seeing me. You know me. I like you and I trust you. I'll come back. I will come back because of those things. It's not because of the punch card. There's actually a really funny, and it's ironic, the name of this company as well. We have a local coffee place here in Colorado uh, called Loyal Coffee. That's I didn't even think about it, the name when I was putting this together. But they started to build almost the antithesis of these programs. They called it the anti-loyalty program. 
And what they did is they said, here's all of the partner coffee companies. We want you to go try all of these companies. And if you go to this company and mark down that you went to this company and come back and show us that you went there, we'll give you something for free. It was wow. so interesting to me because I'd never seen something go that way. But it was really good for them to say, hey, we're promoting our community. We are supporting local. We're supporting all of these companies. And we are confident enough in what we bring to the table to know that you're going to come back because our coffee's good. Our atmosphere is good. Our music's good. Our food's good. All those things. And sure enough, I go back all the time. So there's really fun ways to play with this. But I want you to know that you have the tools right now in front of you on your computer to be able to do this because really you are the reason that loyalty is going to build up. So let's talk a little bit about this. Let's dive into this. We've got four specific ways that I want to encourage you all that you can start doing something like this right away. Now, first and foremost, and we've, we've teased at this pretty, you know, a couple of oh, times yeah. already in the first 20 minutes here, but the easiest, most impactful way to do this, provide exceptional customer service, provide opportunities for people to be taken care of. Uh, Steve, you, you mentioned it a little bit ago. There is zero situation in any business where you're not going to have an unhappy person at some point. Oh, yeah. just, it's going to happen. There's just no way, right? It's that perfectionist mentality. If you think <laughs> that's going to happen, you will be very, very disappointed. But what I don't want you to sit here and think of when we're talking about customer service is just things like what we do at Bomb, Bomb where we have a customer care team. They send in a ticket. We try to help with that ticket and fix it and send it out. There is a lot more to customer service than just those interactions. It includes everything with the way that a customer interacts with you. So think about when a new lead comes to you the first time, how do you follow up with them? How do you touch base with them? How do you introduce yourself on a way that's different? How are you responding? How are you watching them? How are you learning about the things going on in their life and following up and talking about a lot of these things? Um, here's some more stats, you know, just to add to it for those of you that are a little bit more analytical and like seeing the numbers on it. But 50% of people say they switch to a competitor just after one bad experience. I have a typo on that slide and I apologize. It's not on bad experience. It's one, one bad service experience. And what's interesting about this is as I read further into this study, it's not about the thing breaking or the thing not going right. It's how the thing was handled. It's how do you handle that situation? Um, the, the second stat goes to that too. 89% believe a quick response to an initial inquiry is important in making that decision. Steve, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because you're managing a team that you guys focus on these types of metrics <laughs> all day long. What do you guys talk about? What do you think about when you're working through how do we provide that exceptional, exceptional uh, service there? Well, I love where you're headed with this. And the, the first thing that comes to mind is this idea of scalability, right? You were saying that you don't need to have all these massive items in place. You can actually do everything yourself. But I think that that comes down to the way that you approach this. Uh, to, to gain some perspective here, and, and thanks, Sarah, for the shout out to the care team. I have six individuals on my care team. I want you to keep this in mind. Six. We service 55 to 60,000 people that use our bomb bomb tool and platform. Now, if you use those numbers and you put out some percentages there, you're like, wow, there's a lot to that. But it all comes down to the way that this is approached, because you're right, speed to service, um, how the customer is interacted with, how escalations are dealt with. All of these create these little blips, these little moments where it creates this overall arching loyalty. And so it doesn't just come down to the carrot. It comes down to those situations where maybe you do have this mistake that was made, right? I'll tell you right now, the best way, the best way to get it to to handle these situations is to first get in front of that mistake. Don't try to hide that, right? We send videos initially out of the gate that just says, you might have noticed that this has happened. I want to explain why. So if you can get ahead of it and in a quick response, like first reply time, right? The faster you get to them though. I always use this analogy. Imagine going to a restaurant. You're going to a restaurant, maybe one of those brand loyal ones that you're you're loyal to. And all of a sudden you walk in. Imagine if nobody greeted you. Imagine if you got sat and then all of a sudden they're like, they didn't give you any time expectation, right? Now imagine the, the inverse. A waitress comes over and says, give me five minutes. Maybe it takes eight to 10 minutes instead. She comes back, I'm so sorry. Give me five more minutes. I'm trying my best here. Maybe it takes five more minutes. All of a sudden it's take 15 to 20 minutes, but you don't care as much because the expectation has been set. You know that she's busy and something's going on and you're receiving tremendous service because she brought you your drink while you were waiting. 
it changes everything how you handle a situation. And that's where video really changes the game for my team and for many people that use BombBomb. You can see the intention and that that changes things just a little bit more. If you're not getting in front of the people you're servicing, even in a digital medium, you should because you're not going to convey emotion over plain text, in my opinion. But this has led to a first response time on our side of two hours or less. And my team, I am proud to say, is sitting at a 99% rolling 30-day CSAT. Now, obviously, we'd love to close that 1% too, but that's that's pretty darn good on our side. Well, and we're going to talk about metrics and things. So if you heard him just say CSAT, and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's totally fine. We're going to talk about those in, in just a little bit here. But I think what, what you're talking about, Steve, is really building that expectation and then maybe taking that little extra step. And I want to show you a quick example. And this is actually one of our team members. This is James. Uh, and, and the way that he responded to a message, he had somebody who had an issue, was, was upset about this issue and having to deal with this. And I want to show you, he went ahead, dealt with it, took care of the issue at hand, and then decided, you know what, I'm going to take one more step and I'm going to send him this simple, quick video just so he has a chance to kind of get to know me more, put a face to the name, start to build the humanity in this exchange instead of it just being black and white text. So watch the video that James sent here. Hey, Brad, James over here with Bomb Bomb. Just wanted to record you a quick video to say it was a pleasure connecting with you today. Again, you are all good and set for sending. If for some reason you are still seeing that banner, like I said, I would just log out and log back in. You should be good to go from there. As always, if you have any further questions, definitely don't hesitate to reach out. We are more than happy to assist you, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Simple, quick, easy. How long was that video? Maybe 30 seconds. I don't even think it's that long, right? It took him 30 seconds to send that. Here's the response he got back from the client after oh, he this. worked hard to fix the issue and then sent this follow-up here. Man, I need to take notes with your guys' follow-up and how you reply back after a conversation or a meeting right away to recap something with a video I need to start integrating that into my real estate practices because it is truly phenomenal and it does separate you guys from what you do. And I know that there's a lot of slackers in my industry, in the real estate industry. And so I do love that. I think it's phenomenal. And I am so excited to try to start taking some steps to make sure that that's part of my continued process. Hope you have a fantastic Tuesday as well. We'll talk soon. Kevin, that I... was a simple move that just took that guy from a bad experience to a loyal customer. What were you going to say there, Steve? Kevin, can I chime in on something? Because there's something going through chat a lot. There's there's a, several people saying like, well, I'm awkward on video. I don't know how to do this. I... Here's what I'll tell you. I've been doing this again for six and a half years. I would, I love that Sarah called it out. Embrace the awkward a little bit. That's an interesting way of saying this. Um, think about when you're in front of a person, right? You don't say everything perfect. You have the ums, you have the whoopses, you have the moments where you're like, wait, I lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? This doesn't have to be scripted. In fact, I find and my team finds if it's not scripted, it's human. People will respond better. They don't care if you sneeze in the middle of a video. Just move forward. Uh, you'll get a better response. I promise. I had a video just to that point a little bit, Steve, where I was sending some follow-up videos to clients that I had talked to, just thanking them for the time that they gave and the energy. And my daughter decided to walk up in the middle of the video and was like, I think if I'm being totally honest, I think she was talking about how she had just gone poop in the potty and was very proud of herself for this. She's three. I have twin three-year-olds. So this is a big topic in the Andrews house right now. And I was just laughing and I was like, I'm sorry, Georgia, come meet uh, the person that I was sending it to. And guess what his response was? It had nothing to do. It was like, I, I it had nothing to do with the topic of the video. It was like, dude, happy to give you the time. Your daughter is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Thank you so much. I've got kids. Cherish that time. We'll talk soon, right? This is how you start to build real human connection. I mean, I'm watching all of the comments right now of just genuine vulnerability. Awkward makes you real. People love the human. This is a really hard muscle to challenge yourself. Oh, yeah. You feel nervous about it. And no, for those of you who that put out there like, but I'm super awkward. I'm uncomfortable on video. That's okay. We all are. We all feel this way. Right now, we've got over 500 people on this webinar. Every single one of us has felt uncomfortable at some moment recording a video. And maybe still do 100, 250, 1,000 videos in. That's okay. We all have these things, these insecurities, these vulnerabilities that are very human. 
those are the things people actually want to connect to. And when it comes to something like this, like sending a video, following up and, and providing that customer service, they don't want the perfection. We're not looking for the perfect response. We're looking for somebody that we can connect with. Why? Because we connect with people that we like. We connect with real human beings. We want to see the real in them. So we bled into this a little bit with the last point, uh, but differentiating. Differentiating is a really massive opportunity for you to be able to expand and build that loyalty with your clients because you're doing something different. So that response to James, oh my gosh, I need to take notes on what you guys are doing because a lot of people in my industry are not doing that. This could be a thing that really differentiates me, right? Now, the important thing in this that I think is, is a great exercise for all of you to take is when's the last time you sat down and went, these are our company's values. These are the values that, and maybe the company is you, right? If you're a realtor, a mortgage lender, whatever, maybe you are your company. That's okay. What are the values you want to live by as a company? I would strongly suggest if you have not thought about that or written those down in a while, do it. Take 10, 15, 20 minutes with your cup of coffee in the morning and go, what are the cornerstones that we want to live by? What's amazing about it is once you know those, then you can communicate those to people and start to find the people that connect with those values that you care about. Here's something that I had to learn as I've, as I've gotten older is uh, I am very much a people pleaser. I want everyone to like me all the time and be my best friend constantly. That's not going to happen. <laughs> not everyone is going to like me. And that was, I, that sounds silly, but that was a hard realization for me at 20 something years old. <laughs> so that's true with our business. We are not the right business for everyone in the world. You are not the right realtor, lender, salesperson, financial service consultant, whatever you do, there are people that are not going to fit with you. How great would it be if you let those people know your values and they decide that they need to go work with somebody else before all of a sudden you're button heads and having a really, really hard interactions and really, really tough customer experience. If you know your values, you can communicate those and you can personalize and do some of these things that are really going to differentiate and establish you with this. But values tend to attract, right? And so if you, if you state your values, those with similar interests, those with similar beliefs, they naturally gravitate towards you. And actually you found you find a lot of core trust in those core values that you share with one another. And so you, by attracting the right people at the same time, you detract those that, like you said, Kevin, down the road, it might've been, you know, a big cluster by the end and, and caused a lot of pain. And so I love this sentiment. And the chat is definitely agreeing with you on this. Well, and it's, I think it's really fun. And I'm actually going to share kind of a personal story with you guys. So my wife owns a design company here in Colorado Springs. She does interior design and she's been doing it for a very, very long time. Um, and she uses Bumble. She uses video because she has started to see the power of it and the opportunities there. Uh, but here's a really interesting story. So she had been working with this client for a while. And it's been, of course, anything with design and construction takes way too long to do. And so there's ups and downs and there's hurdles you have to get through. And she'd been working through all of these with this client. Well, guess what? All of a sudden, about a month and a half ago, my daughter wakes up from her nap and is just not breathing very well. Like you could just, we could tell she was not herself. She was laboring. She was working hard. As a parent, you know, that's a very scary moment. So my wife's like, I'm going to take her to the urgent care. I'm going to take her in. She walks in the urgent care and they go, you need to go to the ER now. And so we're in full panic mode. I'm grabbing our other kids, dropping them off somewhere. She's racing to the hospital. Long story short, we walk into the hospital. We go through the ER procedure. We get everything calmed down a little bit, but we have to stay overnight and move into a room. And guess who walks into our room as our doctor? Her client. This client that she's been working with for months now walked into the room as our PICU nurse, our pediatric intensive care unit nurse or doctor. And oh my gosh, the experience was so interesting because Lydia had really taken the time and effort to build a good experience for her client. And now we were sitting there on the complete other side at the mercy of her showing us her expertise. And this is where you start to build these human connections and being able, the ability to differentiate. The video example I'm going to show you here was actually what my wife followed up with because they're still working together after we come home. My daughter is totally fine. She has asthma. We learned fun fact. Um, but now my wife has some deeper meaning 
and deeper connection with this client. And she can address that. We don't just forget those interactions. We now acknowledge those and use those to continue to build on this relationship. And so I really want you to listen kind of at the beginning of this, how she talks about some of those sort of things. Hey, Sarah, how are you doing? Um, this is the third time I've recorded this video, so I'm really hoping that there are no glitches. <laughs> Basically, I just thanked you for a very long time for the amazing um, help you gave us this weekend. Just, it was such a blessing to have you there and we felt very taken care of and clearly you shine at your job. Everyone around you loves you and you are just so attentive and um, just you explain um, so clearly like the steps of what may have happened, what we need to do next and just make people feel taken care of. So very, very good at your job. I hope that I can be as good at my job um, and that you trust me moving forward like I was able to trust you. So this was her intro. This was a long video. I mean, this video, because she ends up, you can see she's doing our screen recorder. Um, if you're not familiar with our screen recorder, Tara, I know you've got a link. You can kind of share some information about that. But it's what she's doing is she can have, has her video on screen and she's showing her desktop. So from a design perspective, she shows layouts and she shows items and she walks people through their content. But the point that I want you to see in this is she took the time at the beginning of this video to connect and show empathy and appreciation for what this client brought to our lives. Because that was a scary moment that she brought a lot of consistency to, and we really needed that. And then what did she do? She took it and transitioned it to, thank you for allowing us to trust you. I hope you can trust me at what I do, just like I was able to do with you. And now they get to continue moving forward and we didn't miss those. To me, this is a great small example of going above and beyond, of differentiating, of using life experience with your work to connect more and more with people. So I think it's really, really important that we continue to do this. Um, and I just think it's a really fun opportunity, a personal story of mine. So of course I connected with it, but I know that there are opportunities like this on a very consistent basis where we can take advantage of these things, where we can learn to do these things and kind of grow from there. Steve, have you guys had any stories or situations like this that um, that you've experienced from your, you know, maybe a care rep story or something like that, where they kind of went above and beyond connected on something that was much deeper than the actual issue itself? Oh, absolutely. And shoot, I could, I could pull from a couple of them. It's interesting that you brought this up. This is something I actually talked with my team with this morning. And it's something that I'll, I'll reiterate this idea. I see a lot of you in chat saying, well, when should I specifically send video? And that's going to be different beyond, you know, kind of every industry. But this right here, what, what happened with Lydia and what happens in our natural conversations with individuals is that we get the chance to send what I like to call <clears throat> the unexpected video. The video that it's not the intro necessarily. This is more than just an intro. The video that's not just the let's schedule a date and a time, but the video that reaches out and touches on something personal. Because once you build that that trust, right, and you touch on that personal aspect, you recognize someone as a human, they're totally willing to listen to you. They they want to understand how they can work with you on a, on a professional level. But we had a, an individual on our side who was having actually just a, a tremendously hard time. And he was being very transparent through emails back and forth. We were trying to help him with, you know, technical issues and all that stuff. But it came out in kind of the the mess of all of it that he was struggling personally. And he said, I'm a little bit down today. I'm, I'm sorry. And what was interesting is that that rep, um, I'm actually going to give her a major shout out, Tara. Um, she she reached out um, with a video where she answered his question. She fixed the problem. But then afterwards, she sent a video um, where she recognized, I heard you were a little bit down today. I wanted to help you out. And she turned on some music in the background and then just started moving. And she's like, I hope that your day is phenomenal. I hope that this helps lift your spirits. And he gave the best customer satisfaction survey I think I've ever seen. Uh, at the same time, we see this person probably every other week. Um, and he, he continues to, have, to come to us. So it was a cool moment. Yeah, it's fun. And I think that's a good reminder that uh, not all these have to be like negative experiences. They can be opportunities where you just are having fun. And I think Tara is, is a great example. And Tara is the one helping with chat today. If you missed that introduction later, but she never misses an opportunity to put a smile on somebody's face. That is an amazing way to differentiate because guess what? Even if the product's not working, if you made my day better, if you made me feel good, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember that feeling. So love that story. And uh, I think that's really, really fun. So 
here's a really, really interesting point that I think we don't take enough opportunity to do. And this is kind of woven in some of the other things we've been talking about, but the opportunity to listen and respond. How often are we actually listening to our clients on what they want from us? So often, especially the longer you're in a business, I think you get into a flow. We get into a rhythm. This is how we do business. These are the steps that we take. But I think it's really important for all of you to look at your businesses and go, do I have opportunities and areas and ways for my clients to let me know how they think? How did I do? How did I respond? Believe it or not, not everybody's going to take that opportunity unless you directly ask. So I would really strongly encourage find some spots, whether it's you know post-closing, post-contract, you're done with the deal, ask for feedback. Hey, would love first off, thank you for the opportunity to serve you in this capacity. Would love to know what are some things that that maybe we did really well that you were, are appreciative of, and what are some areas that that we can improve? We always want to make sure we're getting better for our clients. Now, the key to this is don't ask for feedback if you're not going to listen to it, right? That is the worst thing you could do because if people don't feel like they're heard, then it, it's not going to make a difference at all. But if you really ask for feedback and listen to it and you start to have some ways to measure your success and your client satisfaction, that gives you so much where you can learn and find these opportunities to continue to grow from it. Now, Steve, I know you mentioned CSAT a little bit earlier. I have CSAT and NPS there. Will you give us a very quick high level idea of what those metrics are for, for the people in here that may not know what those are? Absolutely. Uh, kind of more on the local level, CSAT, customer satisfaction. That's going to be a survey at the end of some sort, sort of interaction with a customer, a client, or someone you're working with, right? And we have one on our site. It, it's a simple question, right? It's simply, how is your experience with customer support? Please detail that down below. It leaves it vague enough, but at the same time specific to the situation so that they will honestly tell you if anything's on their mind, good or bad. And those bads, honestly, those go to some of my favorite moments because you have the opportunity to reverse that. You have the opportunity to create something remarkable. Now, NPS, that's more on a business level. And many of you have probably heard this before, but this is going to be how a lot of um, customers, clientele, and things, they rate an entire business group. Um, and so Costco, someone shouted that out, has actually a very high NPS uh, given, you know, kind of all the other trending um, areas with it. And so they're just ways to measure is this team, is this person, is this group, is this business, how are they doing from a customer perspective? Now, you don't have to go find ways to how do I get CSAT and NPS installed in my flow. If that feels overwhelming to you, fine. But find a way where you can get feedback from people. NPS and CSAT are just very well-known ones. CSAT's for customer satisfaction. NPS is called the net promoter score. Simple question of how likely are you to recommend our company to somebody else? And then there's a one to 10 scale and those kind of vary out differently. So Find a way where you are getting feedback. Like we've talked about multiple times, we can't avoid the bad things from happening. We can control how we respond. And that I think is the most important thing. In fact, I think personally that these seemingly negative interactions are our best opportunities to build client loyalty. Somebody that never has a bad experience, never interacts with us, can stay with us as long as they're finding benefit, but we don't necessarily have as many opportunities to get to know them and connect with them. When they do have these interactions where they need our help are the opportunities where we can really, really follow up. And, and to all the conversation earlier from the awkward and the vulnerability, humanity is our best strategy. Always start with empathy in these messages. Hey, I am so sorry for this mix up. Uh, you know, I understand that must be very, very frustrating to be going through that on your end right now. If we come back in a defensive manner, guess what they're gonna do? They're going to rise up. We're going to rise up. We're going to rise up, right? It's just builds, 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 builds until it explodes. It's amazing what a couple simple sentences of, I'm sorry you're going through that right now. I apologize that we've caused you any stress. Um, let's do what we can to fix that. And let's start moving forward so we can help you out. How that slows things down. Because what do we want as humans? The humanity. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be understood that what we're feeling is not crazy. Quick quote from my side that I, I always try to live by is that the best customer service experience delivers an appropriate experience. And for me, I know that's kind of a vague statement, but it 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 highlights one big thing. This is going to look different for every person you work with. What is the appropriate experience? 
Maybe they want it to be quick. Maybe they want it to be detailed. Maybe they want it to be personable. You have to feel that out a little bit as you're going through it. Yeah. And I have a quote here from Steve Cadigan as well. Uh, did you know that the most loyal customers in the world are not the ones you didn't make a mistake with? The most loyal customers in the world are the ones you did make a mistake with and course corrected right? So we learn from those because we're getting that feedback from somebody and we have the opportunity to move forward. So I want to show you an example here um, from Mike Minervini, who's a real estate agent, been with us for a very, very long time. Uh, and he had one of these situations arise, right? He had an appointment with a client and guess what? They both had it scheduled and written down on different days. It was a very, very common, oh my gosh, miscommunication I thought it was this week. You thought it was next week situation. The problem was he had this listing appointment with them and also was simultaneously out of the city at a real estate conference. So guess what? He gets a pretty unhappy email from these clients when he does not show up for this listing appointment. They are not thrilled that they had scheduled a time and that he wasted their time by not showing up. Well, this is one of those opportunities where you go, shoot, am I going to fight back? Or am I going to take the opportunity to connect with them and try to kind of rework this and build a mutual understanding? So what did he do? He grabbed his phone, his bomb bomb app on his phone in the middle of this conference, and he recorded and sent them this video. Hey, Samantha. Hey, Rich. It's Mike Minervini from Team Super Mike. I just wanted to apologize again for the miscommunication. Just wrapped up with a pretty long day here at my real estate convention for Remax, and I just wanted to uh, let you know that I will be at your house on Wednesday, uh, the 9th of March at 5 o'clock. And uh, again, I apologize for that miscommunication, okay? Looking forward to helping you get your home sold and presenting you with a, a great marketing plan to get that done. All right, have a great night. And again, thanks for understanding. See you later. So again, let's talk about real. Not a, a perfect video, not an amazing video. He doesn't sit and grovel for minutes at a time to beg for their forgiveness. He addresses the situation. He apologizes for the miscommunication. What I really love that he does in this is he goes, I am going to be at your house on this day at this time. There is no miscommunication of this day, this time. I will be there for us to continue to talk forward. What I noticed from here too is that kind of earlier to what we said, he jumps just right in front of it. He takes the bold leap and he's like, I'm going to record him a video in the middle of this conference. We're going to do it right now. Like you said, he doesn't necessarily grovel in any way, which you shouldn't, but he says a mistake was made, acknowledges it, and then he clearly outlines a plan. This is what's going to happen. Um, yeah. Well, and Simple. Dan just chatted in. What was the response? Well, thank you for asking, Dan. <laughs> uh, what's great about this is, of course, it was a successful interaction. He ended up meeting with them that next Wednesday. And then he let us know over the next four years after this video was sent out, he ended up buying and selling five different homes with this couple because he took this opportunity. I mean, that is a perfect example of they could have split ways and they went somewhere else and he went somewhere else. And they both could be like, ah, it was really disappointing the way that happened or you get in front of it, like Steve said, you meet, you work through that issue together, and now you're building more loyalty and connection because of that. And he had the opportunity to expand his business and, and that repeat business with them as they keep moving forward. So the last one here, of course, is, is kind of all of these put together to a degree. But really, you have the opportunity through just using video and using yourself, using nothing else, to build champions with your clients. Invest in your clients. Listen to what's going on in their lives. There's this term that we use a lot, and it's a, a pretty common term, but the, the idea of surprise and delight. What are opportunities that we can reach out to our clients that they're not expecting us to reach out? What are chances we can send them a little something that we weren't expecting? I've had some tech companies, um, when I came home three years ago when my wife and I adopted our twins, uh, that we were working through them. I just had a very business interaction. They were kind. We would meet and do things. And all of a sudden, guess what? A couple of little onesies show up at my door that say their brand on the front. That is an opportunity where they listened. They heard where I was in life and they took that opportunity to surprise and delight me. Now, was I like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing. I can't wait to share your brand on my babies. Not really, but it was the thought, the thought that counts. I think a lot of times when we start thinking about these things, it's, Oh, I've got to do something big and amazing. You don't, I promise. Uh, to, to Lydia's video a little while ago, she took the opportunity to say thank you and I appreciate you showing up. I know you worked really hard to be there for our family. James took the opportunity to send a quick, simple video after the situation was resolved to say 
I'm so glad I was able to help you with that. These don't have to be these massive gestures. It's all about us taking the time to see our clients, where they're at in their lives, and follow up and connect on that. I love the third bullet point here of champions are loud. Uh, yes. This is something, my wife is the perfect example of this. If she goes and believes in a product, you will not be able to not hear about that product for the next six months of her life because she is going to tell everyone. It doesn't matter if you wanted to know about it at all. You could be saying, oh, we're going to this restaurant. Oh, you're going there. You should be going here. This is the best restaurant. This is the best food here. That's what building a champion is. And of course, the product matters. The service matters. You have to provide a good service, but it's also that connection. And if you build that connection, build that loyalty, build champions within your business, those people cannot help but talk about it. And I love it too. Even even a, a simple kind of note here, Kevin. When we we entered the room, right, uh, there were people in chat all of a sudden like, "I love Bomb Bomb. Bomb Bomb's great." I'm not shouting like our praises to be, you know, to just be like, "Look at us." I'm saying like, champions are loud, and, and they will continue to 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 boast and to say what they love and to say who they love and all those kinds of things. And those are the kinds of people you want in your corner at the end of the day. And the only way you get there is by these simple little moments that you cultivate with them and and to the the point of those 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 chats there here i'll read the read the quote loyal customers they don't just come back they don't simply recommend you they insist that their friends do business with you think about a time when you saw a movie that you loved think about a time when you saw or went to a restaurant that the food was amazing or you had an experience that was remarkable you tell everyone about it um and I, I think that's kind of what we're all going for. Don't overthink. I see that in chat. Don't overthink this. You want just imagine the person standing in front of you. That's the best way you can do this. Well, and there's perfect simple opportunities for these things. You saw it in the bullet points before. We talked about birthdays, you know, home purchase anniversaries, contract renewals, holidays, things like that. These are really good opportunities that can be really positive experiences. I also want to show you some clips that just made me laugh. My birthday was in August, so like a month ago. And I started getting some things that showed up to me on my birthday. And here's a couple of them that, that popped in my email. Now, it's a funny mixture. And I know there's a balance to this. Every business has to find moments that automate. You have to have systems that are working for you. And I commend any of you that have set those up. However, do you think these birthday messages made me feel special in the slightest? Nope. Because I know that that was built by some CRM or some company. It plugged my name into the mix and sent it to me. Funny story, that bottom text message is actually from my brother. My brother's system sent me this text message that said, just want to say happy birthday. Hope you have a great one. Please feel free to unsubscribe. I was like, I sent him a screenshot. I was like, thanks, man. Appreciate it. So these are these opportunities that if we don't, pay a little bit of attention to, and if we're not intentional with this, we're not building champions with these kind of messages. Now, could you potentially do an evergreen style video and put it in an automated message where it's, hey, happy birthday, I'm thinking about you today. That's gonna feel a little bit more personal? Absolutely, that could be a great strategy. One of the most delightful videos that you'll probably see. Oh man. And Laura Anderson. In. They're realtors, they're a husband and wife team, and they actually take the time to send these videos to their clients. But talk about a perfect example of not perfection, of being real, of being human. This Guys, take, take notes on this one. This video is incredible. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we have fun at work. Happy <laughs> birthday to you. <sighs> have a great day, Lynette. Kick back. Have some cake. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Am I back, Steve? I think you're back. Am I back? Where'd I go? You're back. I don't know what just happened. It just disappeared for a second. So. 
Well, well, we'll hope that doesn't happen again. I don't we, know what happened. We teed it up and everything. Jeez. <laughs> well, I don't know how much of the video you guys actually got to see in that, but you got to see them laughing and enjoying and just enjoying this video at the beginning, right? That's what I want you to see is it's not perfection. It's about the personalization. It's about having fun and making people smile. So um, I apologize for that breakup. Hopefully we're all back in here. Um, Steve, are you hearing me and seeing everything okay? Oh, uh, you sound much better now. Okay, great. Well, good. <laughs> um, we'll stick with that then. All right. One I don't want to ramble too much. That I want to show you guys. And this is actually an example that, that I sent to somebody. But this was an example of seeing and understanding where your clients are, what they're going through in their life. He had reached out to me, this client, he and I had been going back and forth about just bomb bomb stuff, video stuff. And I saw where he was located. He was located in Florida. And this was right before the most recent hurricane kind of went through that Florida region. So I sent him all the information he needed. And then I just closed the video with something simple like this. I don't want to ramble too much. Just wanted to say, hey, I hope you're safe. Um, please reach out and let me know and us know at Bomb Bomb here if you need anything to keep you and your family safe out there. Um, we would love to support you in that. Um, otherwise, you know, hopefully this this doesn't continue to grow too much as it passes through your area and, and you guys can hunker down and stay safe for the next little bit here. But please reach out if we can do anything and, uh, and we'll talk soon, okay? Thanks, Eric. Have a good day, man. Again, nothing fancy. There's nothing fancy about that video. It's I'm even rambling a little bit, right? But here's the response I got back from Eric. I don't want to. Hey, Kevin, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. You know, it's funny when people think of Florida, they think of the fears that we have, you know, around, uh, you know, hurricanes or alligators, things like that. Really, 99% of the fear that all Floridians have is really, is our air conditioning going to go out? As long as that stays true, the rest of it is, uh, oh, thank you. The rest of it's so par for the course. So for a day like this, what it really means is I get more of this. Schools are canceled. We get to uh, stay at home with all them. But our supermarkets are still open, the grocery stores, everything around. So it's pretty much business as usual. In this. I mean, it's, it's so great, right? A, a small couple sentence gesture at the end of my video allowed him to know I see you and I appreciate you. And then he sends me a video back where I get to see all of his beautiful kids and their family. Now I can respond to the family. We're opening those conversations that allow us to get to know each other as humans, not just as clients, not just as work people. I think one thing that COVID has put a, a massive magnifying glass on is we are not just one thing. We are not just workers. I'll be in meetings and kids walk in and dogs walk in and who knows what may happen behind me. And people want to see the well-rounded humans that we all are. So take those opportunities. Those are the kind of interactions that start to build real champions within your business. And that's what starts to build loyalty. So just to summarize all of this, let's go over this in the last few minutes here. And then I'm going to give you our little gift that we wanted to offer up. Here's the summary. Provide that exceptional customer service on every interaction. Make sure you're doing everything you can to go above and beyond and provide the best service possible. Make sure you're differentiating by doing different things, uh, handling a normal standard interaction that anybody else in your business would handle one way. Is there a way I can surprise and delight? Is there a way I can go a little bit above and beyond? And then build champions by listening and responding, seeing what's going on in your client's life. Listen to their feedback, give opportunities for that. The more that we have these conversations, these back and forth, the more you're going to build that loyalty and build those champions within your business. Now, I know we've got a few minutes, so I wanna dive into this and then I will stick around for a few minutes for some Q&A stuff. If any of you have any of that stuff that's still floating out there, um, but we wanted to offer something up to you if this is a topic that's really, really powerful to you. I even saw some people posting Q&A about they're trying to be more human-centered. If you didn't know, BombBomb Bomb actually wrote a book about human-centered communication. It's called Human-Centered Communication. <laughs> so it's pretty tough to miss. Uh, we have a free digital copy of this book, and I want to give that to all of you. So I've got the, the link there on this slide. Um, Tara, I believe I gave you access so that you could go ahead and share that link as well so that all of you can go in and download this book. Now, very poignantly, just because of this topic, I want you to focus on chapter 12. Feels weird to jump that far into the book, but this whole book is built around us interviewing people outside of BombBomb Bomb and hearing about what do they believe are the next steps in sales, in customer experience? How are we building better customer experience? And the way that we're doing that and their takes on that. Chapter 12 is all about Shep Hyken, and Shep Hyken is a vast resource of knowledge. Just look up his name, Google his name, and find it. Um, but 
He is chapter 12. He is the focus of chapter 12. And he talks a ton about client loyalty, about customer experience, about how to build all of these things. So if you don't have time to dive into an entire book, totally understand. If you do, please, you will pull just little nuggets out of this book that will change the way you do your business. But if you're talking about loyalty, use that link that Tara just shared in the chat and go download the book for free. It's completely free for all of you because you attended this. Focus on chapter 12 because I think there's just some really, really great stuff. For those of you that need more resources, we're going, I need to know how to use this. I need to know where to start with BombBomb. Bomb. Bomb, Bomb Studios is the place for you. The BombBomb Bomb Studios is kind of my baby. I built this thing from scratch. There's 20 plus courses in here. It's all about on-demand courses. So it's kind of like an academy with a lot of other uh, systems out there. You can go learn about specific features. If you want to learn about the screen recorder, there's quick courses about things like that. If you want to learn where do I start, there's some getting started courses. If you need some best practices, I just need to know how to build an email that's going to get open. Great. There's a course all about email engagement. So no matter what you need, BombBomb Bomb Studios is free for you. It's included in your memberships with BombBomb. Bomb. Go ahead and click on the, the link that we'll share so you can get to that. You can always get access in your account as well. If you're in your BombBomb Bomb web app and you click on your name in the top right corner, it's in that little drop down menu that you can click on BombBomb Bomb Studios and you'll be able to link right over to that. Um, last but not least, before we jump in and see if there's any questions out there, next month, we do these deep dives every month if this is your first time. We always try to alternate between strategy like today and work through some different philosophies and strategies. And then we talk about some technical stuff. We are diving in to one of the most powerful, maybe most underused, potentially most confusing <laughs> tools that we have here at BombBomb. It's our email composer. We have a drag and drop email composer where you can build emails, newsletters, templates, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to talk through the basics of how you can get started with that and then talk through some strategies and some of those sort of things around that. So make sure we sign up for next month's uh, link there. I'm going to go ahead and grab the link if you want to sign up now. Um, we'll go ahead and put that link in the chat here. So let me grab that in just a second and I will share that. Um, but it's going to be a great one there. So Steve, yeah, what did you want to add to that? Well, and those those composer individuals, those that want to know how to build templates, those that want to know how do I add a button in, I see you in chat. I see all of you. Sign up for this webinar. This is going to help you a lot. We'll have people, we'll have representation from the care team there. We're going to make sure that we get you the help and support you need. And for those of you that are asking a lot of technical questions, we're here to help support at bombbomb.com. We do do this through email and chat, but we do give you a phone call if that is needed for this situation. We want to ensure that we get you the support that you need. Now, Peggy asked a really good question that I wanted to answer live here. She's like, is there a way to bring CSAT into a bomb bomb template? Now there is, um, there, there is a way for you to do this. And so a very simple way, and I've seen a lot of people do this, is that they have an email address that's just meant for customer satisfaction. They build an email address that it's like, anytime I want feedback about my team, about how I'm doing, send it to this email address. And you can actually build it into a template. So when they click on that button, it loads up their email. It puts that email address inside of there. And then in that template, you can say, tell me how I'm doing so far. Uh, they'll give you the feedback. They'll send it. It'll send it to that email address. You'll be good to go. That's one way that I, I've seen a lot of individuals do this. Now, Peggy, if you have more questions about this, you can reach out to us. We would love to help. But I want to just throw out an idea. Always. We are always here. I mean, you, you can still see Tara's picture here. She's here helping, but she is one of the many amazing people on that team that are helping out. Steve hops in and answers questions. <laughs> what, what I love about this opportunity to bring more faces into this webinar is you're getting to know the real people you will hear back from. This is the heart of BombBomb, Bomb, is the people. The people are what make BombBomb Bomb so powerful. And so if you need help, please reach out to us. Um, we'll, I'll keep sharing kind of the link for the free book. I will also make sure that the link for the free book, as well as the link for next month's webinar are included in the follow-up email. So if you want to sign up for those, you won't, you won't miss any of those sort of things. Um, for those of you that need to jump off, because I know we've hit the top of the hour, thank you for being here. Uh, you being here means the absolute world to not just me and Steve and Tara who are here, but the entire company. We believe we are as good as our people. And my gosh, we have the best people in the world that, that are here and committed to BombBomb. Bomb. So I'm going to stick around and kind of browse through Q&A a little bit to um, to see if there's any questions. If you ask something there, I'm going to look through and see what we can find and answer those. But if you do need to jump off, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
We appreciate you more than you know. Sign up for next month's webinar. We'll be diving into more technical stuff and talking through some strategies there. Um, but let's see what we've got. Have you seen any themes? Have you been playing in the Q&A at all, Steve? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely answering some questions in there right now. This is this is my bread and butter here. Lisa, you have a great question. <laughs> you said my company insists on a logo background. Do you recommend? Here's what I'll say about this. If it is compliant with what you need to do, you should probably do that if it is required by compliance. However, here's what I think about virtual backgrounds. I think virtual backgrounds hide pieces of yourself. I think you learn a lot about an individual by seeing some of their home environment, their pictures of their kids, the the wall art that they have, the books that they're reading. Like I, I think that there's a very human connection to that. You will very you'll probably never see me really use a virtual background unless everything's just a mess back there. That's about the only time that you'll see me use one. And so just wanted to answer that question, Lisa. Great question. I just saw somebody chat in. Uh, who was it? I think it was Scott. Yeah, Scott. He said, hey, if you want to share your email, you got a video coming your way. You bet. <laughs> I just shared my email uh, in the chat there. I know that opens up to a lot of things, but I'm willing to do it because I appreciate all of you so much. Please, if you want to communicate, it's kandrews at bombbomb.com. I want to be a resource for you. I want to build a connection with you deeper than just we see each other once a month on these webinars. So do not hesitate to email me and let me know if you need a little bit of help with something. If you just need somebody to shoot a video to, to get some feedback, if you want to communicate, you can also find me on LinkedIn as well. I love connecting with people on LinkedIn and, and shoot messages back and forth. So um, please do not hesitate to do that. Um, love that feedback, Steve, on the logo. If you can use it in a virtual background, there's also ways to put it on your video page as well within BombBomb. Bomb. And the video page mm -hmm. is the page that is around your video. If you need to have your logo and some links and some contact info there, um, that's a great resource. Uh, Tara, if you have an opportunity to grab a link to uh, either the BombBomb Bomb Studios course on the video page or maybe a support article on that, would you mind sharing that in here uh, again as well? That would be really, really awesome. Uh, just so people have access to, I need to get my logo on, but I don't know if I want to put it in my video. Um, awesome. Yeah. There it is. Yep. Car is killing it right now. So, <laughs> um, so we'll do that. I just threw my email in there again. There's some questions about specific membership types and those sort of things. I'm not going to dive into the full differences in all of those between prompt and bomb bomb plus and some of those different things, but just know if you go to, I believe it's bombbomb.com slash pricing, we have a breakdown of all the different membership types there and you can see what's included, what's not um, as far as some of those sort of things. Uh, Maria, I saw that you posted something about how can we put in a background? We have a virtual background feature here at BombBomb. Bomb. So once you pull up your video recorder, there's a little button in the bottom left that you can click on and actually upload your own photo or use some stock photos that we stuck in there. Um, so basically just know to get to that process, you'll go ahead and start, like you'll open up the video recorder, like you're going to record a video before you click the red record button, look in the bottom left on that little bar that's at the bottom of your video recorder. Uh, and you'll be able to add a virtual background to it. And again, bomb bomb studios, we have a course all about how and why and when to use virtual backgrounds. So if you need a resource on that, um, you can do those sort of things. Uh, Posting into the chat, a quick link about virtual backgrounds. So that'll help you out if you need it. Here we go. Gosh, these are great questions. I love that you're all asking about new things, learning about some new things. Um, I've thrown my, my email address in the chat a couple of times. So if you want to reach out to me, touch base with me, please let me know. I will give you the caveat. I'm not always the right person to help you, <laughs> but I will get you in touch with the right person to do that because Steve's our guy. Steve's our guy that does that. Our team's the team. Yeah, exactly. We've got an amazing team over there. So... I think we've got most of the questions answered that'll be really beneficial for kind of everyone here um, as I'm scrolling through this real quick. I apologize if we did miss your question. Uh, there's a lot that comes in. There's a lot of communication on these, which we absolutely love. So I'm going to go ahead and close it off. We're 10 minutes past. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whether you're a bomb bomb client or not, I know that time is money. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to hopefully teach you a little something that will help you move your business forward. Just know, lean into your clients, build those champions, build that client loyalty. I promise you that it will have a business impact and a personal impact on how you're doing your business. We will send a recording out, a follow-up email to everybody in the next few days with the recording and everything. Uh, huge thank you to Tara for being here and answering so many questions and helping out. Steve LeBaron. 
thank you. Thank you for all of your wisdom, your input. Uh, even beyond that, thank you for the hours and energy and time and care that you put into not only these people, but all of our Bob Mom clients. Oh, I thanks, really Kevin. appreciate you being here, man. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you to all the individuals that have joined us. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Janina. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Shauna. Thanks, Duffy. Uh, I could go on forever, but I appreciate <laughs> all of you for being Bomb Bomb customers and clients and working with the wonderful team that we have on this side. And Kevin, you did a great job. You're all amazing. Thank you. Have a wonderful September. Can't wait to see you in October to go over some of that email design stuff. If you need us, reach out. Otherwise, have fun. Send some videos. Smile. We love having you here. Thanks for everything, everybody. Have a great day.